Hi, welcome to another face reading caricature. Today I'm going to be looking at Johnny Rotten, or John Lydon as he was christened. He's been a bit of a musical hero of mine when I was a lot younger. And I've always enjoyed looking at his little interviews and things on YouTube where he gets all ratty with all these interviewers. But I suppose sometimes I look back and it makes me cringe a little bit. Some of the stuff I used to think was cool now makes me feel a little bit embarrassed for him. So I thought it'd be interesting to kind of go through and just see what's going on. The first thing I noticed and that I'll talk about today is here, just on his cheek. If I can just get my pen. These kind of lines here. These kind of lines here are sometimes a sign of lung deficiency. It was believed in Chinese medicine. If people had these kind of lines, it was like their lungs or their breathing capacity had been compromised. Any kind of unusual markings on the cheek were seen as a lung problem in old Chinese medicine. When you combine it with this line here, and I think I spoke about this in a previous episode, this line on the chin is supposed to appear on people's faces when they're kind of in their 50s and 60s. It's a sign of that you should be getting ready for retirement. It's the body is kind of feeling exhausted. And what I noticed on Johnny Rotten is if you look at his even younger photos, he has that line of exhaustion on his chin even at a young age, you can kind of see it there. There's no clear photos. This is probably because he was born with meningitis and it kind of, he was in and out of hospital from like, since he was born to about the age of seven, I believe. So whenever someone's got that kind of line on their chin at a young age, it's usually because their health has been compromised. And there's another sign of this. And I was trying to find, it's so difficult to get a good picture of his left ear, but there's a kind of indentation here the best picture I found was the one where he's at the Arsenal game here, if I just zoom into that. Whenever there's any kind of strange markings on the ear, especially the left ear if it's a man, because the left side of the face is the yang energy, the sort of masculine energy, you can see this kind of indentation just there. This area ideally should just be kind of uh, th uh, quite thick but smooth. That's the sign of a, a kind of a normal kind of birth, a normal childhood. Whenever there's any kind of strange markings, that's usually a sign that health was compromised or the birth was problematic. If you look at his friend here, that's just kind of like a smooth ear in this kind of area. Whereas Johnny's is kind of, there's an indentation. And he's been in the news recently, he's just been through a court case with his fellow Sex Pistols over the licensing of music in a TV series that's coming out. Uh, this is a picture of Danny Boyle. He's the director of things like Train Spotting, a Slumdog Millionaire. He's doing a TV show based on Steve Jones, the guitarist's book about the Sex Pistols. And Johnny took the other two members of the band to court recently to try and stop them from using the Sex Pistols music. And here they are. So this is Steve Jones on the left, Paul Cook, the drummer, on the right. So they took him to court and they, they basically won. So this TV show's going ahead. And these are the sort of things that, when you're Johnny's age, I think he's 62 now, you shouldn't be going to court fighting pointless... Uh, court cases based on pride really it just seems so daft you know he's at this age where he should be slowing down and that's what this line is about we also notice there's no filtrum generally people with no filtrum here it was a sign of fertility and unsurprisingly Johnny at 62 has sired no children it can also be a sign of an, another sign of exhaustion and this area doesn't seem to have much of a filtrum at all in fact none of his photos like even there, you know, there's no filter there. It's a sign of kind of a life force that's been kind of depleted slightly. And there we can see the line on his chin much. It's very deep here, actually. And these kind of lines, when they sort of go in like this, the sort of sunken cheeks, again, it's, these are signs of exhaustion. This is someone who should slow down. We've also got this line here. I'm just going to select another colour. Here, a worry line. And it's a very deep worry line. Unsurprisingly, it appears more on the left side of his face. We'll be going into that in a moment. Uh, a, sign who's spent, a sign of someone who's spent excessive amounts of time worrying and concerning himself with things. Here's his divided face. So we've got his public image limited. The public face is always the two right, uh, yeah, the two right sides. 
put together. His private repressed side is always the two left sides side by side. And we can see the deep line of worry here. The deep chin line, the sunken cheeks. And these are on his left side. This is the side he doesn't want us to see. This sort of squareness of the chin. In fact, the squareness of the head overall shows that he's trying to he's trying to show more of his aggressive, stubborn, kind of self-assured characteristics on this kind of side of the face. Whereas on this side of the face, the head's slightly rounder, shows a more sort of friendlier side to him. Have here things a bit more angular, and even this stare in the eyes on this side. Here the eyes are quite <laughs> severe. Whereas here they're slightly more subdued. You also notice actually on the private side his head is a, a little bit more a little bit thinner. Here everything's a bit wider, a bit more extroverted. I think he was a naturally shy child growing up who kind of learnt from his own interviews, he says how he kind of learnt how to be kind of a bit of a performer. He could kind of hide his shyness with this kind of act almost. I'm just naturally shy, I can't help that, but I have a brilliant way of getting over it, and that's the aggressive Mr. Rotten. Some other notable lines I noticed was round here. When these lines come down from the eye like that, these are called pain lines. Someone who's seen a lot of pain in their life. Oh, there was something else I was going to talk about, actually, and it's his mouth. Not only does he not have any lips, which is a sign of somebody who's possibly not very good at expressing themselves emotionally, but the way he holds his mouth is very tense and tight. You notice that in the first image. It really presses his lips together in this kind of wonky sort of mouth. A bit of a contrarian. And this could be represented by someone with this kind of uh, asymmetrical mouth. Someone that can't always be trusted. I know he talks a lot about how honest he is in interviews, but I guess it's a case of, you know, if you have to tell people that you're honest, maybe you aren't as honest as you think you are. So we know that he's repressing his emotions. He's not always truthful about how he feels. And the sort of asymmetrical smile and the pressing down of the lips could be a sign of someone who's not always being honest or they're always giving a version of events that kind of suits him. Now at the moment this is his wife Nora and they've been married since I think it was the early 80s and she's recently uh, developed uh, Alzheimer's and he's become her full-time carer. Which in some ways, I mean, as they say, these things that happen in our life, there's neither good nor bad, it's what you do with these situations. And if he kind of slows him down in his own life by being more of a carer to somebody else and instead of getting embroiled in court cases and things it slows down his own life he focuses more on what's important which is spending you know as much quality time as possible with his wife hopefully this area would abate slightly you know if he slows down his own life by caring for somebody else his his life would also be extended Okay, so let's try and do a little caricature. I found this little image here that I did ages ago. When I first started doing little caricatures, I put together this little image. He's one of the first people, I guess, I thought of doing. This is a pretty bad caricature, I have to admit, but I was just starting out. And I haven't really improved much since. But then I saw one of those courtroom photos. And I thought, what is going on here? This was done in his recent court case over the use of his music in the upcoming... Danny Boyle TV show and this is a dreadful caricature this kind of made me feel a little bit better about my own efforts it'd be an interesting sort of job to do just to sit in on these court cases and just sit there sketching whoever it may be so I'm hoping to sort of do better than I did last time <laughs> I think I'll leave it there. I kind of got him. I didn't really know what hairstyle to give him because he's changing his hair constantly, so it's very difficult to know what to give him. So I gave him a generic sort of tuft of hair. He is quite a difficult person to get right, I have to say. So I apologise to whoever it was that did the courtroom caricature. I apologise to Elizabeth Cook for uh, slightly mocking her courtroom artwork because I haven't done particularly much better job myself so I'm sorry Elizabeth 
Uh, yeah, there's one a few things that I noticed which um, came up as I was drawing him. He's always attributed his kind of famous glare to meningitis, you know, and you can see that if I find another photo of him, where the eye kind of wanders out slightly, this was sometimes seen as a sign of self-sabotage. Unless it was attributed to something like uh, strabismus or something like that. But I think he's always said it was his, the meningitis kind of gave him that stare. And maybe it gave him a propensity for self-sabotage. He certainly kind of sabotaged a few interviews in his time. He's quite well known for that. Maybe this explains why the lips are so pressed together. He realises that his mouth has got him into a lot of trouble. But hopefully he's going to wind down a little bit. Now he's caring for his wife. I hope it's kind of like a happy ending for him. I think it's better in old age just to mellow out and enjoy your twilight years. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. I'd like to apologise again to... Um, what was her name? Elizabeth Cook for criticising her artwork. There's nothing wrong with her artwork. If she's got an Instagram account or whatever, please check it out. I'm sure it's very good. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you soon. Goodbye. Uh, could you let us know what you're doing now, what you're into now, what your link with the Look, street? I don't have to explain myself to anybody, and I ain't going to really bother. Now, I was asked here, right, to interview with the band here, Pill, but now, like, we're facing a cheapskate comedy interrogation act. And it just ain't on, pal. It's a joke. It's a farce. You mean you don't want to give any messages to I don't to have the... to explain myself. Sooner or later, somebody will open their eyes. Oh, sorry, rude word. Well, it sounds like we've heard this story before. Really? Um, Would you like to tell me where? Good night. Good night. Will I continue? Well, that's up to you entirely. Uh, do you all follow the leader? Yeah, well, all right. I thought, well, I thought that was small... the point of having four people. You small... asked just me and him, didn't you? To do all right, an come on. The know? rest of the band. Oh, why don't you try answering an intelligent question? Try and think of one. Tell you if what. You never ask one in your life. Let's forget about it all. Right. Yeah, I think you should. Oh, no, no, no. That's total cop out. Cop out. <laughs>